Five art installations are up in our parks to mark Singapore's easing of COVID measures. Titled As You Were, the project by the National Arts Council hopes to rekindle the joy of being outdoors. On your next walk in the park, you may bump into some of these art installations, like this half-eaten biscuit or this giant cup to remind us of a well-used phrase on Zoom calls during the pandemic, can you hear me? Now, some of the art installations will be at Bishanang Mokyo Park, Jurong Lake Gardens and Pungal Waterway till the end of October. Let's find out more about this project from Natalie Tan. She's assistant director, sector development at the NAC and the artist behind the seesaw installation, Adeline Quay. Good evening to both, both of you. Uh, it's good to have you here. Natalie, let's begin with you. Tell us something about how this project came about. And also creativity is not something that you can uh, sort of just come up with very quickly. It takes time for artists to uh, brew their ideas. So how long did you give them? Uh, we didn't really give them very long, unfortunately. Um, but actually, this is the second time that uh, NAC is uh, commissioning a series of artworks during the pandemic. And ultimately, what we wanted to do uh, was to try and find a way to um, encourage um, the general public and uh, uh, to go outside. I think everyone was stuck at home for a long period of time and uh, they had to... Uh, kind of contend with themselves quite a bit. So we really wanted uh, to encourage everyone to go outside, connect with nature, and uh, have a bit of fun with uh, some of the responses that the um, artists have come up with. Natalie, let's bring you in on the conversation on that point. You came up with uh, the art installation called Noon at Play. What was your idea behind that? Hi. Um, both Hazel and I were very um, inspired by palindromes, uh, which are words or phrases that uh, read the same, backward and forward. Um, and we also thought, gee, you know, we've been stuck at home so much, and it was really nice to just think about how this sense of balance, um, the symmetry from palindromes could also be manifested visually um, through the seesaws. So we, during the site recce uh, at the park, we, we looked at the various um, inspirations such as the, the plants that were growing wild um, at the waterway and seeing how we could respond very specifically to the built urban architecture for that space. Adeline, uh, you, you, was, you were talking about uh, sort of uh, experimenting with ideas. So during the pandemic, which you know lasted for, well, at least uh, the part where we had these safe management measures, we couldn't go very many places. What was it like for artists like yourself? It was uh, fairly difficult. I think some of us coped uh, better than others. Um, for, for some of us, I think we look to everyday rituals or everyday uh, materials around us. So it was actually quite heartening to see how when we went to the park, um, at one of the first things we noticed were the roadside beauties or the wildflowers uh, that were indigenous to the, the swampy or to the waterway. Um, so the the instead of just having seesaws, which manifested the balance, we also thought it'd be nice to bring in parts of nature. Um, so the 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 leaves um, of the golden leather um, fern or baku laut um, became um, these um, two blades that you see in the center um, of the seesaws. Um, it was quite nice to have the iridescent film too, um, so that in the day, um, the, the work, uh, uh, the film would catch um, or mirror the hues um, from the surrounding. So it depends. If you go on a, on a very bright day, you see more colours. Um, and then in the night, um, it would also light up. So you see that the shadows on the, on the, the, the floor are really will um, be different depending on the, the intensity of the sunlight. It's like several art pieces in one and at different times of the day as well. Uh, Natalie, NAC has also released this public art guidebook. Uh, why the need for this? And, and 
you know, what will it entail? What's it going to be about? Will visitors or people walking through the parks really uh, require this? Um, I think the Public Art Guidebook uh, was commissioned specifically for artists and also uh, would-be commissioners. Uh, ultimately, the Public Art Trust really hopes to encourage uh, more individuals to um, start to develop the capability of uh, doing public art or commissioning public art. So um, the guidebook actually uh, lists out quite a lot of uh, interesting uh, tips and uh, tricks on, for commissioners, first-time commissioners as well as um, experienced commissioners. Uh, they can also learn something new. Uh, we did interview quite a number of uh, um, stakeholders that uh, include uh, real estate developers as well as government agencies that are familiar with uh, the uh, process of commissioning public art to uh, give valuable input. Um, and also, I think like uh, for artists like uh, Adlin uh, and also some of the other artists that uh, came on board this year, um, I think a, a guidebook like this would really help them navigate some of the um, uh, difficult uh areas to cover, such as like safety. I think public safety is something that uh, you cannot take for granted. Even things like uh, uh, mm -hmm. licensing, navigating all the various licenses you need to get for uh, the commissioning of public art. Uh, so the guidebook is really like a, a helpful way for a commissioners and artists alike to kind of get uh, on board with yeah. public art. There is so much to know. Uh, and. Uh I want to thank both of you for joining me this evening uh, to discuss this and talk about uh, these art installations that we'll be seeing. Uh, thank you very much uh, as Natalie Tan, Assistant Director, Sector Development and NEC, and artist Adeline Quay.